I've got uh, Dr. Christy Monk here with us today. Um, hi Christy, thanks very much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Um, I just wanted to ask you, um, in your presentation, you know, you talked about um, a Delphi study. Could you tell us a bit more about that study? Um, basically, my study was about workplace bullying in search of a clear definition, and the modified Delphi study basically incorporated some quantitative and quantitative analysis but it mainly focused on me doing a survey which allowed my participants to remain anonymous because the topic of workplace bullying as you know is kind of sensitive in the workplace so I wanted to make sure that I was able to get the information that I needed without making people feel slighted or nervous about sharing the information about bullying that they had contained within their workplace because basically what I did was reach out to 20 human resource managers and directors as part of my um, test population to help me with my study and the reason why I chose the human resource directors and managers is simply because they're the ones who are responsible for enforcing and implementing policies and they're also the ones who know the law. So I thought that was the better route to go when we're looking for a clear definition. Okay. And so what, was there anything, what was the most surprising thing that, that came out of the study? The most surprising thing that came out of the study is that they know what it looks like in terms of how they define it. So what I did, I had asked two main questions. Does your company have a workplace bullying policy and is it written in the, the handbook? And, and the answer was mainly no. And then the second question was, how do you define it personally? And they all had similar definitions that highlighted keywords such as mistreatment of employees, defamation of character, um, imbalance of power, mistreatment, repeated mistreatment. And I, I thought that was interesting because if you know what it looks like, why aren't the code of ethics or the employee handbooks containing terms where employees can and easily define it and know what the consequences are. Mm -hmm. And um, so do you really, uh, in terms of workplaces, you know, they all have different structures, you know, you've got flat structures, you've got very tall structures, and um, when I was speaking to somebody about dictatorial style of leadership, mm -hmm. um, do you think that the structures and management styles are, you know, something that definitely needs to change in, in line with this, as well as the policy, or do you think it's more of a, of a, of a process? Well, I think that the organizational culture is the overarching um, dynamic of the workplace, which then it speaks to leadership, styles, and behaviors. And if there is this tyrant type of culture, those are the type of managers you typically find in those organizations. So one of the things that, that was included in my research was leadership behaviors and how they influence workplace bullying. And, and I think it's very important that when organizations see to hire their leaders that they do some type of assessment just to see if there is bullying tendencies and if th this person has the wherewithal to treat people fairly and, and I think that's one of the things that is missing from leadership behaviors and how we assess who we hire and put in positions of power. Mm -hmm. It can be a bit difficult though with them um, with results driven um, yes. approaches to well, most companies are results driven mm -hmm. um, and I guess a lot of managers are recruited on that basis that they, they get results. Yes. So do you think that they need to change their style or there needs to be some um, intervention to help them to, to manage more effectively in terms of considering the welfare? Yes, I think that there should be some type of integration of people oriented along with those who are results oriented because that's where you have the imbalance where and I'll say for instance like me, I love relationship building, but I work for people who are task oriented. So I'm always viewed as different because the way that I approach solving a problem is different from theirs. Because I believe if you get the people to trust you, you'll get more from them. Whereas when you're task oriented, it's get it done by any means necessary and I'm talking to you in ways that are like parent-child relationships and that's where I think the great divide comes in where people can feel bullied versus feeling cared for. So I do think that there needs to be a balance of personality styles and types as it relates to leadership.